Did you get it? No, I wasn't recording. Where? Soccer field or football field? Let's do the football. That's better. Like on the bleachers? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know how to do that now. I like said, you bleachers, really wish you were This is. You want to know what this is? This is the. No, this is the. The football witch project. The, Jen football, being a the football witch project. Class. The TV 25 yeah. project. TV 25 project. We should do actually something like that. That'd be so fun. We're actually what? out in the wilderness. Got two cameras. You got this crappy little home video camera, which is mine. And then we got and this. And then you got that. <laughs> right there, <laughs> top quality <laughs> crap. This is my little, my little home video. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to cut right now. So? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Actual footage of this. Actual footage. Oh, JD getting that filming. <laughs> do we have to get you filming me filming somebody? That's what I was trying to do. And, Mike, I put that. and you can use this footage. It would be like black and white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Are right, you guys are done? <laughs> <laughs> I'm JD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike, you're done. DJ, you the tripod, jeez. Hey, <laughs> I was, was trying to go for the effect. <laughs> I'm the effect. I told you it was like a thousand. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times. Oh my god, it's the dreaded Blair Witch bike. <laughs> Did you get that, JD? Yeah. Did you get it? Oh, my God! Matt! Matt! Oh, my God! Matt! Carson. What? Huh? Did you get her on top of the press box? 
Are you making that sound, Jen? Oh my god. I do that. What happened, Jen? What happened? What happened, Jen? Shut up, get out of so Did you get that? I remember you telling me something, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't hit me. Oh, God, There's like crap in this camera, like dirt. Hey, Mike, did you get that? Derek, what have you been doing with the camera? Nothing. Oh, stop. Derek, Derek, give me that. Derek, no, Derek, get over here. I need to set that up. <laughs> Poking her with it. Derek, Derek, give me that. Oh, shit. We can, we can. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. The 1131 and the show no mercy. What's the in the shot though? I don't care. Jen, you just got in the shot. I'm Mike Bailey, I'm filming the t film. I film the filming. <laughs> no one. I am. Behind the scenes. GD, turn it off! Turn the camera off. Turn the camera off. I don't care. No, let's get in front of the sign that says hit somebody. Let's get in front of the sign that says hit somebody. Um, but it's taken down. No, it's right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can do some effects. Everyone needs to slide on that hill. Get that hill. Come on. Yeah. Slide down that. Yeah. Okay. Where are we going? Pick some place. Bleachers, Danina, or Matt. Oh. By the. <laughs> 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 All right, we're doing the hit shot, buddy. Someone was buried here, everybody. Who knows? <laughs> what if you lift it up? What does it look like? <laughs> it is actually oh, the point. Come on, you idiots. Let's go. Get away Blair. before before Blair Jen kills us. Blair Jen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're done. You can't you're see done. Me. You can't see me. Shut up. Hey Jen, right here. Sitting next to it or standing next to it? Hit somebody. How will you sit up on it? Shut up. I'm down. putting hey, my hey. foot. Go away. I have to put this on my shirt. Go away. Oh, yeah. I need to put this in. Go away. Go Derek away. wants to see that, Jen. <laughs> oh, my God. This scene has been rated R for the following audience. <laughs> yeah. Mature audiences only. Ah! Ah! What are you doing? What's up? Hold on. <laughs> I can't hold it. I want to make a higher feet to put on. Oh my god! <laughs> How wooed. How wooed. Here, do it, do it, do it. Ready? Dick! <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I killed it. What'd you just call it? I'm pausing it now. Yeah. Okay, kid. Hit, hit. Put your body in the shower. <laughs> yeah, does it work? I stilled her. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Is it recording again? What? No, it's recording. Oh my God. Put your hands in the air, Jen. Oh, she stilled. I know, I know. That's funny. Hey, is your thing in? Yes, it is. <laughs> JD. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> JD. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Here, Mike, let me see your hat. <laughs> Put the hat there. Is it on? All right, hold on, hold on. 
<laughs> oh, the hat's there, and JD's gone. Nuts. <laughs> I'm just having fun. What? I know. What? High school what? varsity football. Can't hear you. You've got to be shitting me. Say something. Hello, my name's Jen. I'm very cool. My nickname is Booty. Mike's got a camera right in my face, and I don't appreciate it. Derek can go poop in the office, and uh, JD is <laughs> DJ. is a pretty cool guy, and I can't oh. think of anything to say to Matt Carson, but that's <laughs> Skippy, he's Skippy. Skippy? Try that little psycho move where you zoom in. Wow, that's awesome. You have a good what psycho move? <laughs> hey, how come the like. Hey, Hello? I, no, I'm not running. I'm gonna take a run. Dude, does that not work? Batter's dead. Derek never checked it. I did. You never came over and said, let's check the batter. I do not know. Hey, DJ, what time is it? Yeah, but band, we're going to be out here anyway. Fuck the instrument. I don't. I only have to be out here for 10 minutes anyway. <laughs> that doesn't work. Coaches on both teams to see what kind of preparation goes into post-season match. There you go. Uh, I don't know, it's like, why is it doing that? <laughs> We're stupid, we can't get it to work. Help us, somebody! Ah, you broke my eye. How can you break your eye? That's dumb. Matt Carson, the only oh. serious one. Hang up, Matt, you haven't had a hernia. <laughs> it won't work. You just had it. You have it. You can have it many times over. That's it's low. moving up. It's moving up. I'm not calling up. Can, you hear me? can they hear me? That is the question. I can hear you. Well, thanks, Bailey. <laughs> I appreciate it. And they're incompetent, and I'm going to go help them out. Here. Yeah, doing the work. Hello. Oh. That's awesome. I just did it. That psycho move. It was pretty cool. We're like everybody, but Jen is like. What? Going out and Jen is just standing. How do you like the do same. that? I want to know how they do that. <laughs> it's so easy. You zoom out and move forward. Zoom in, move out. Hey. I'm there. Get away. This is the guy that's been watching us. He's a nice looking guy. Yeah. Hello. It's getting really dark out here. Piece of shit. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's like, I don't know. Mike <laughs> just gives that dumbass <laughs> Oh, you're dead. You're not, you're not oh, no. Look, it's a little mouse! <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh Bailey, I wanna see this Kill it. later. <laughs> ah, it's running away! Holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> I've officially decided. <laughs> it's a bird! <laughs> I might just stand there, I want to try that. <laughs> what, you zoom in and you you walk in and zoom out? Right? Everybody's looking at it! He's stoned! That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Uh, There's like wasted so much time. Well, Alright, everybody. I love it when they tell me they Film one, we didn't get anywhere because uh, Derek and uh, Dead. Hey, JD. Dead. JD. We're heading back home. We just killed a mouse, and <laughs> and it's uh, and then it took off. Oh, Brian likes my little zoom in, walk out yeah, thing. What did you guys do today? Oh, we killed a mouse. Yeah, we we killed a mouse. Got it on tape. No, really mouse. Mm -hmm. What? I'm gonna watch this when I get back. What? They have Jen's life. Camera in the background. The fence. Yeah. <laughs> no, DJ. No, kick it again. Where is it? <laughs> Are you taping? No. No. I'm taping. I'm taping all this. Oh, oh. I'd love to ride a bike, but I just can't. Can't because it's like chained. I can't ride the bike. <laughs> Hi, I am a six foot five basketball player. me the camera all right this is rather embarrassing so I'm turning it off time Into the class. <laughs> Book at National Reading Incentive Program, and it's designed to motivate children in grades kindergarten through sixth grade to read more 
And we do that by rewarding them uh, for the reading achievement. And of course our goal is to have develop lifelong readers, as your goal is. And uh, we have about 22 million children in the program. And each year we send out in the fall materials to the principals um, to disseminate to their teachers. Uh, and the teachers are the ones who set the reading goals. We think that's very key to the success of the program because they know the interests and the reading levels of their children. you provide reading materials to the no, teachers? No, we, we don't provide the reading materials. We, we just provide the incentive. The incentive. We, it's a tool for them to use. We want them to own that program. And then when a child meets his first uh, reading, month's reading goal, and it's a five-month program, he gets a certificate that he can take to Pizza Hut. And then at the Pizza Hut restaurant, the managers and the crew people congratulate that child, tell that child what a wonderful thing he has done, and give him a button with a sticker to recognize that first month's reading goal, and then they get a free personal pan pizza. Now, if somebody listening wants to get into this program, how do they do that? It's very easy. They can call 1-800-4-BOOK-IT, B-O-O-K-I-T. All right. We encourage them to read all five months, and if they do read all five months, they also get a Book It All-Star Reader Medallion, and we thought it was an original idea. <laughs> it wasn't, but it's still very effective. And the thing that we like about it is that the parents are given the medal to put around their child's neck. And then if all the children in the class read any four out of the five months, the entire class plus the teacher gets a pizza party. Well, sounds pretty good to me, but uh, it, the whole point is quite similar, though from a different point of view. Get those children to read, get them into the habit, and make it fun. Now, we also want to make sure that children read good books and interesting material and that teachers know the value of, of reading. Now, now, Steve, you work from the University of Pennsylvania with teachers, with the libraries. Tell us a little bit of how you connect to this. Sure. Um, I, I'll have to say it's Penn State Penn University State, to right. us. Penn State, right. I'll be in trouble back right. home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I, uh, I get a chance to work with uh, teachers in training so that one of my jobs is to help people who will become the future teachers find uh, children's books and curriculum and things like that that will help uh, kids learn in all uh, aspects of the curriculum, not just the language arts but also in science and in math because as you can see from the examples we've heard already, uh, I think that John's school is a success because they've integrated reading into every aspect of life there. And that's what I think my goal is as, as an education librarian and that is to put books uh, in the hands of people who will be putting them in the hands of kids. I also had a chance in the past to work in, in the public library world where before we get to the schools we want to instill in our kids that love of reading. Uh, Lillian Katz talks about being able to teach knowledge and skills but perhaps the most important thing for a public library and for our topic tonight is the idea of teaching dispositions or habits of the mind, a, a fondness for books because a lot of kids will learn to read and write very very naturally if they just see the value in it. And, and it's so easy to see the value just by reading to children and telling stories. And those kids who may not learn to read so easily will know that it's worth the trouble of learning because they know that they want to have access to what they're hearing um, at home or in the library or in the school or wherever it may be at whatever age the child is. It seems that we're sort of rediscovering reading. You know, people used to do that, you know, read around the fireplace mm -hmm. when there wasn't television and there was, wasn't all these other kinds of forms of entertainment but now we're sort of coming back to it and saying mm -hmm. it is basic to all kinds of learning. Is that what it you're finding? It is absolutely true. Uh, there, uh, I don't think there's anything more important um, in a child's uh, future success as an adult, in a child's success in school. The evidence is there that, that reading, um, being read to, uh, there are three things for example in, that take place in the homes of early readers that happen no matter where the home is and what part of the country that's that children are read to, uh, that there's reading material in the home. And the one that I think we sometimes slip on is that parents are seen reading themselves. They have to be a good example. That's right. And it's yeah. more of, of the example than anything else. That's, a, that's right. Seems like the natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Lane is an interesting example of a volunteer. Uh, this is not your full-time job to work with the Girl Scouts. You have another full-time job, but you're one of the uh, wonderful Americans who's giving so much of her time to the Scouts. Now, how have you involved the Scouts, the Girl Scouts, in reading? Well, the uh, Girl Scouts USA has a mission statement to inspire all girls uh, to achieve the highest ideals of character, conduct, patriotism, and service. 
so that they can be happy and resourceful citizens. And one way they can do that is to be literate. Uh, the Girl Scouts has long had a literacy program uh, in their Right to Read project. Uh, we sort of added on to that by going to the library for Be Your Best Day, which was celebrated on March 12th, which is the founding of Girl That's Scouts. That's sort of an annual event, Be yes. Your Best Day. Right, and our project this year was to do something for the library. So we contacted our local uh, library that serves uh, the area that I chair and ask, what do you need? And that's one of the basic questions that they I'm sure they love that ask. question. Um, <laughs> they, we found out that they did not have a history of Girl Scouting in our community for African American girls. Uh, so we set about to correct that, and uh, the girls and parents uh, and adults, uh, leaders, uh, worked to compile documents, uh, photos, uh, which we were able to take uh, to a photocopy place and have laser photographed uh, because the library did not want the original photos uh, to compile a reference book uh, which will eventually Sorry? be given to the library mm -hmm. um, in their reference department then other people will be able to check out and read the history of Girl Scouting in Area 9 in Louisville, Kentucky. That's a really wonderful project. So they really created new reading material <laughs> and obviously became readers in the process. Yes, they did. Well, one of our concerns uh, nationally is, as we're approaching the summer, as the secretary mentioned earlier, is that even children who'd like to read lose three or four months over the summer. Uh, has that been your experience? If, yes. if children don't read during the summer, they fall behind? Absolutely. And uh, in many of the inner cities, uh, books are not around. Um, as Steve mentioned uh, about the importance of uh, of having parents model. Sometimes we don't have that. So what we need to do is to look and try to get some incentives out there. At our school, uh, we, we tell them, look, if you can bring in one Books and Beyond slip during, um, in the fall. What does that mean exactly, now, to bring a books, in a slip? Right, okay, let's go back and talk about uh, what we have. Books and Beyond has eight stations in it that we have around the world. And once the child reads 12 books or 15 books, depending on the station, uh, the parent signs it and submits it to the school. So again, there's the, uh, the partnership between the home and the school. And once they bring in that book, we also have corporate sponsors, such as McDonald's. We even have Pizza Hut. We have uh, Flagship Bank. We have uh, Merrill Lynch. And they, they've all donated certain prizes. Uh, for instance, uh, Friendly Ice Cream in Worcester would donate uh, a Sunday ice cream when they reach Station 8. So as they move around, uh, and our theme is around the world. There are many themes that we can that we choose from. And this happens to be the one that we've used. Uh, we start at North America, we go across the Atlantic Ocean, and we end up in Paris, France. And you keep up this right. during the summer? In the summertime, no, in the summertime, it's a little different. What we, what we say to them, because we, uh, we don't have that control of seeing them as often. And, and our goal in the summertime is have them read 15 books. So when they bring back fifth, uh, the Books and Beyond slip with 15 books read, they're going to be treated this year for, with an ice cream party right at the beginning of the school year. Great. Well, we'll get back to that the other summer thing too is reading. The, right. The best bargain in America today is the library. And we encourage yes. our children yes. and our parents to visit the library during the summertime. Well, that's certainly something that uh, we strongly encourage. And we have a caller. We have uh, Carol Murphy from uh, Ainsworth, Georgia. You're with us, Carol. Hi, this is Carol Murphy. I'm the media specialist at Baker Elementary School in Ackworth, Georgia. Reading has been one of our main goals this year, and we realize how important parents and parent involvement are in encouraging readers. We do participate in Book It, and we've had family reading nights and scholastic book fairs and author visits. But besides the Books and Beyond program, do you have any more creative ideas on what schools can do to encourage parent and community involvement in reading? Well, Secretary Riley, that's another chance to make a pitch for a read right now. <laughs> well, read right now, of course, is a, is a summer program, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a grand program for uh, a Rotary Club or a Girl Scout troop or whatever to uh, be a... <coughs> 
person who is a tutor for a child or partner and to get the Read Right Now kit and uh, work with them one evening, uh, afternoon, a week for 30 minutes and then they promise to read every day at least 30 minutes but it puts them in the library and that's so important helps them get their own library card and then of course at the end of the uh, summer they get a free pizza but the uh, uh, that's our summer reading program uh, of course uh, title one and the other education programs that we have that deal with basic skills uh, title one basically for uh, underachievers or for uh, disadvantaged young people really are, are very helpful during the school period. But I think she probably wants to know maybe from some of uh, these what folks you can do in the uh, any year. other school ideas you might have. Steve? Well, one of the things I found successful in public school partnerships uh, when I worked in that area was uh, to use um, older children to, to read with the younger kids, which is something that's yeah. part of your program as well. But that can be uh, become a service, a mini service mission within the elementary school. Um, I also think that um, I see nothing wrong with the idea of incentives because what you're, what you're lighting fire to here is, is so important that to, to get them started, it's fun to have the contests and the silly things. I, I really admire John for, uh, he's being shot out of a cannon, I understand, next year. And, <laughs> no, maybe not that, but, but, to, go, but also to take, uh, well, one of the librarians I worked with, for example, would um, have a map of the United States and have a little prize hidden behind it. And, uh, and so uh, it was some huge treat. And so everyone would read to have a chance to stick a pin in to see if they would hit it. Uh, just sometimes little things, it, it reminds me of how fun cleaning the erasers was in the old days if it was okay. perceived as a treat. Sometimes I think it's almost arranging the, the school day to have some of the things that are naturally enjoyable be connected to uh, reading and having an opportunity well, to have a chance for something. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. making it such a focus mm -hmm. and valuing it and saying this is important must be really part of it. As you can say, you can use all kinds of creative ways to get there. We have another caller. Uh, this is Deb Bowen uh, from Washington, the state of Washington. Good Deb? evening. Yes. <laughs> Hello. I'm with the Reading Foundation here in Washington. And we found that television has such a profound effect on our culture. At the Reading Foundation, we found a way to assure at least a portion of that effect is positive. We're experiencing overwhelming success in beginning to change our culture and to refocus on parenting through the use of television and radio public service announcements. We cre created these locally. Our slogan is, the most important 20 minutes of your day, read with your child. And we'd like to know if the Department of Education has plans to create a national public service campaign. Well, we are moving in that direction, but uh, we haven't really done uh, a national advertising campaign, Secretary O'Reilly? No, uh, nothing like this. But the important thing, uh, of course, <coughs> this satellite town meeting and, and all of the other efforts, uh, a lot of publications and so forth, <coughs> the important thing is, is your uh, effort fits right with ours and where people are out there uh, in their own regions having uh, an, an advertising campaign such as you say or John's program uh, in his city the important thing is it all fits together and, and all of us ought to be doing whatever we can I don't think we have the funds really for a national advertising campaign. Uh, we're sort of campaign. weaving together. Ah, I see some hands going yeah. up. Uh, yes, I Eunice. think it's really important because I'm a firm believer in business education partnerships for people on the local level to form collaborative efforts within the community to put on public service announcements and they can be used in, in television, they can be used in print, they can be used on bulletin boards. Mm -hmm. And one year when we had a special campaign um, to recognize the importance of disc jockeys mm. in the lives of younger children. They joined in with us to promote reading and mm. there were a lot of listeners. I think uh, that's good. People are a little suspicious now of national campaigns so that uh, having it really be a grassroots effort is really a wonderful way to reinforce the message because we're all really saying the same things whether we're saying it in Washington or Wichita, Kansas. John. The other thing too is uh, what uh, we were talking about before and reinforcing the read aloud. If we can get every parent in America to read to their children just 15 minutes a night, we would probably revolutionize public education. 
The other thing, too, is in, in our school is uh, we have what we call Celebrity Reading Day. And we invite the policemen, the firemen, the business uh, people in the business sector. We invite uh, a number of different people to come in on Fridays to read to uh, various uh, children in various classrooms. And again, what we're doing is that we're prioritizing reading. So there's another thing that can take place. Well, your message, and the secretary has said this often as well, if uh, we get every parent in America to read to their children right. 50 minutes a day, we would revolutionize education and then uh, have the children read back to the parents uh, as well. You know, it's interesting when we think of using television as a vehicle to promote reading, when television is also sometimes an enemy or a competitor uh, with reading. Uh, how, do you, how do you handle that uh, to deal with, you know, reducing the television time, making more time uh, for reading? Uh, how do you, have you seen that with the Girl Scouts at all? Uh, uh, yes, our leaders uh, can use some of their uh, time, even starting with Daisy uh, troops or five to six-year-old girls, instead of uh, doing some of the things that girls normally do um, in terms of just having fun to make it a fun time with reading. Uh, even though those girls may not have reading skills, the leader will make a game out of a reading program uh, for them. Uh, then as girls progress on, uh, they learn the skills to uh, serve the community. And a lot of the girls do have reading programs uh, in place where they tutor uh, other students. Well, the tutoring of other students. Uh, have you seen the, the relationship with well, between with TV and reading? Yeah, the, the, um, a lot of people, I think, sometimes are uh, quick to, uh, to denigrate television and to think that turning it off is the answer, when real, realistically in our culture, doesn't quite well, you know. Here we are, yes. <laughs> to so it seem kind of <laughs> sacrilegious yes, to say yes, that. Yes. But uh, <laughs> what I think is important is to encourage parents to watch television with their children as another idea of a family activity mm -hmm. that they select carefully, that they limit the amount of time that children can watch television independently. They limit the amount of time they watch it as a model for their children. And when they watch it together, they try to choose things that are based on on good literature. Uh, no one could complain about the Hallmark uh, special of Sarah Plain and Tall, for example, based on a wonderful book. Uh, so trying to watch it together, uh, talking about it, there's evidence that even in story hours and, and also in television that talking about literature is another way to cement good reading and thinking skills, to say nothing of cementing good uh, family relationships. That's a very good point. Yes. And yes. then when you're watching television together, you can find topics of real interest and then go to the library and get a book about that. And that just furthers that whole interest. So you interest can use TV as, as, a, as a tool or a catalyst to, almost, a catalyst, as long as you're right. not glued to it right. day and night. Uh, how do your students deal uh, with that, John? Uh, on the average, uh, the average uh, child, believe it or not, watches 36 hours of TV a week. And that's, that's four shocking. hours and they're in, in school. And what Steve is saying is, is trying to have discriminative TV viewing. And again, with our program at school, we try to build that into our program. We, we talk to our children about uh, perhaps picking and choosing one TV program per night during the week where the children talk to the parent about what program they want to see. And then they have a say in what they're seeing it, but again, you're limiting the number of hours that they're watching TV. Well, that's that makes that makes some good secretary rally. I think uh, one thing that has concerned us is that research shows uh, that while we have made good progress in math and science and some other areas, that uh, comparisons uh, with previous scores, our reading scores in this country have been flat. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people have tried to analyze why that is. And of course, many people say that the time spent on television, really too much time. I mean, really, you hear five and six hours a night and that kind of thing. And, and that really, I do, I do think, uh, harms a young person's developmental reading capacity. One thing that is helpful, I know, is closed caption TV. And uh, we, we feel like that that is a, is a big help for children who maybe not be uh, hard of hearing, but really watching and reading and listening to the words at the same time can be helpful. So I think it's very important to monitor TV and to be careful not to have too much of it 
uh, because we, we really feel like uh, that can, can hold back on, on reading progress. Everything in moderation, I guess. That's just so. <laughs> yeah, everything in the moderation. Mod the motto here, we have another caller, uh, Bruce Adahold from Frederick, Maryland. You're on, Bruce. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think that uh, a lot of people could learn um, from a certain set of books. I think students could really learn a lot by, uh, from life about reading from Howard Stern's books. Uh, I think you could really get a grasp of what life's all about, if, you know, if you incorporate that into the school system. Well, that's a, a different perspective. <laughs> but uh, obviously we also have to... Um, <coughs> know what children read, but there are some terrific children's books out there, and I know you've, you've all got your favorites. Do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, mention any, you were talking about, what do you like to read to your grandchildren? Yeah, well, the, the, the most recent uh, one that I really have liked uh, is, is the real story of the three little pigs, <laughs> and it's kind of the wolf's version, and, uh, and that he really wasn't huffing and puffing, but he sneezed, and it was a poorly built house is the reason it <laughs> fell down and so I, I, I really uh, think uh, it's very very interesting uh, when I was reading that to my two of my grandchildren one six and one five the three-year-old was standing behind me and kept tugging at me and I kept trying to get him interested in this great story about the three little pigs and his comment finally when he got my attention was granddaddy you have a hole in the back of your hair <laughs> <laughs> so you can't always keep their attention. Right? <coughs> well, I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anybody else have favorite books for children? I like, uh, they're, one of my favorite books for really young kids is More, 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 Said the Baby by Vera B. Williams, which is uh, three little love stories tied together. Some of the, the national organizations, uh, like RIF and the Association for Library Service RIF to Children. RIF is reading is fundamental. Right. Sorry, thank you. The <laughs> International Reading Association, the Association for Library Service to Children, all are, are very good at, at having uh, countrywide experts come together and, and develop reading lists uh, and wonderful lists that are out there uh, that most public libraries and schools have access to. So the help is there to help parents and teachers pick out good literature. Uh, that's one of the ways that the the national campaigns, the national organizations help the best. Yeah, we have some examples in the material with Read Right Now mm -hmm. uh, from national organizations of, of some of the books yeah. that uh, kids seem to like the best. Do you have any favorites? Then we'll go oh, to our so next many, caller. Uh, I know, Doc, you'll Dr. get into Seuss, trouble. Dr. Seuss's <laughs> That's books. That's still the standby. <laughs> I know. I read it to my children. I'm reading it to my <laughs> grandchild. So, And I still know all the words, as I'm sure all of us do. Well, we have another call from uh, Teresa Dunham from Fairfax, Virginia. Teresa, are you there? Is Teresa there? Well, while we're finding, finding Teresa, we'll, we'll go back. Let's just go back to this question of, since we are approaching summer vacations, uh, what advice uh, would you give uh, both teachers and parents as to you know how to avoid this loss and how to make the most uh, of, of the uh, opportunity and the time in the summer to, to read. Is there any other than going out and getting a pizza, but, uh, <laughs> which will be your reward or the satisfaction of reading. But uh, you know, if you're sitting here watching this program in your own home and you're worried about your child's uh, I'll tell you one to keep thing, up. Uh, Madeline uh, and Steve mentioned it, uh, others alluded to it, is this idea of having books uh, around the house and reading yourselves. And, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, Shakespeare, though that's a help, but it can be the, the sports page or the financial page or whatever. And uh, young people seeing reading materials around the house, uh, doing reading in themselves in the summer, our research also shows, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that this gap between uh, children who have reading materials around the house and who read during the summer uh, develops between those who do not, and often those are poor kids. So I think all of us have an obligation to try to get all kids uh, uh, around libraries and books during the summer. That gap, we believe, develops and it is never caught up with. Uh, uh, kids, reading is, is a very sensitive skill and you have to maintain it. 
and uh, those poor kids then start the year off behind, the next year a little further behind, and we think that makes a big difference in that gap between disadvantaged and advantaged children. Is that what the research shows too, think, those uh, early years? Yes, it's so important. And I, I have one suggestion in answer to your question and as a follow-up to Secretary Riley, and that is that there is some evidence that by when you, summer reading programs in public libraries, for example, although they may be real wild activities like frog, frog hopping contests and watermelon seed spinning things, they still are connected to literature and to stories. And when they are, We've found that by sending home copies of the very books that are used in the programs, it increases the likelihood that the kids will engage their parents. We can use the children as agents on our behalf to increase the likelihood that they will read to their kids. We found in one study that uh, children who took home a book that they had heard in a first grade story time were better readers and read with more expression and had a better attitude toward reading than kids who heard just another good book. In other words, it wasn't even just good literature, but literature that they heard one time in a story time was enough to get them to go home and say, Mom, Dad, dog, read this to me. <laughs> <laughs> or listen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Pizza Hut's headquarters recently moved from Wichita to Dallas, and one of the first things they did was to fund a summer program for an organization called Young Audiences which is a national organization mm -hmm. and it puts on uh, theater productions for young people and they are underwriting a program this summer in the Dallas public uh, uh, libraries where they will bring theater productions to the library that are based on literature and then they will have workshops following that. And I think it's going to be a wonderful program uh, and it may be the basis for expanding it out. So I think if you can connect reading with some other uh, activity, uh, the arts, um, the um, drawing, painting, all of that sort of thing. Yeah, as the, as the artwork we see here right. where children were encouraged to do ima create images from their books. Another connection uh, that you remind me of is a uh, connection with technology and computers. Now, you know, sometimes we see those as competing interests too, but in fact, you have to be able to read uh, to get on the internet and to, to use computers. Uh, do you think that um, the use of computers is enhancing reading? What I think it's enhancing because, again, it's, uh, it's the printed word. And uh, the more the children associate any type of print with reading, they're going to hopefully be able to pick up books and read them. And, you know, when we go back, I think uh, all of us agree that uh, it's not enough anymore just to teach the necessary reading skills. We need to develop a love for reading. And avid readers are not born. They need to be coached to greatness by teachers and parents. Right. And do your kids, um, are they more eager to read on the computer? Uh, do they make that connection between books and... I think so. Uh, yeah. many, uh, many of the pro software uh, that are on the market now have reading stories right on the computer. Right. So again, it's another vehicle for children to get excited about reading. Do you know if most libraries, public libraries in the country have computers? Steve that could have? probably answer that question. I would say yes. It's, yeah. uh, it's getting, yeah. those that serve the largest numbers of people do. I think it's about 80 percent of those that serve the big populations, but there's still in the United States that huge number of, of underserved, more rural, smaller communities. And one of the issues with technology and, and libraries and reading is, of course, this whole idea of of equitable access, of equity. We, we need to really promote it in public libraries so that we don't leave anyone behind mm -hmm. in the technology end. One of the things I was going to mention uh, in partnership here with John, on, uh, I think that what technology does for us, even Bill Gates admits that the computer isn't going to replace the book anytime he's soon. The book's design is, is pretty good. I think he's going to get uh, children's <laughs> books too. But it's, um, it's in the playfulness of of computer software. One of the best ways to learn is to play. Anyone who has a child of any age compared to your own ability to learn to use the computer, I'm saying that to the audience, but <laughs> think of how, uh, how you go to the manual to, her, to learn how to do something. And then I have a daughter who just tries it. And so there's where I think the technology end will help in that play is a good way to learn uh, the fuller picture of literacy, of writing, of, of thinking, of studying. It gives a child who uh, can work without fear of uh, anyone making fun of him or her. That's right. can do it's so, so some of the things are, are good in that way. But I right. think it will always be, or at least for a long, long time, a partnership with book, not a replacement for 
That's a good way to phrase it. Secretary well, Riley. I was wondering how important <coughs> you all think it is uh, for a child to get their own library card. Uh, people have told us that's very uh, significant. Uh, John, you? We, we have our library, uh, the Worcester Public Law Librarian comes to our school and uh, the children and the parents sign up for library cards and then we also arrange for field trips. Absolutely, because again, uh, what you're doing is that you're prioritizing the importance of reading, bringing them to the library, whether it means we take a field trip to the library or whether it means that they come to us so we make that connection and connections need to be made. Well, they yes. did. We went to the library uh, to work on our project. Uh, the girls were very thrilled. Some of them had never been to that particular branch of the library. There were beautiful murals of uh, interest. And uh, some of them had not been on the computer before. So they learned a lot. And I think um, it made a special day for them. And they made the connection between reading and that this could be a fun place to go. Well, that's so important to make it a normal part of your you know, Activities. life, you know, going mm. to the store, going to the library, that's, that's right. that would be our ideal. We do have another question, and then we'll get back to you. Uh, we have Jimmy Smith from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Jimmy? Yes. Uh, what ideas do you have for students in middle school and high school with reading and writing deficiencies? Did you all hear that question? Uh -huh. mm. and, that's, and that's tough because uh, when you're, especially if one of the problems is you started to develop some negative attitudes toward it. I would say, first of all, try to keep it as fun as possible. Try to integrate it into daily activities. One of the things that I think is a, is a really good idea is to encourage students to keep writing logs, to keep diaries, to make notes, just to write wherever. When I talk about reading material in the home, I'm talking about toothpaste tubes and cereal boxes, and that's what mm -hmm. writing should be like, too where uh, just grocery notes and, and anything at all that makes you practice makes you better, especially if you can do it without making it seem like it's practice. That's a right. gift list, wedding thank yous, birthday thank you. I think some of the things that we did part naturally at some time, we might have to force kids and younger adults to, uh, young adults good to old, do. Good old habits and responsibility. Some of those are, are good. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to one more question we have time for from Dan Tanner from Richmond, Virginia. Dan? Yep, I'm here. Um, All right. Unfortunately, I didn't begin to read until I uh, had my first child, and um, I have a concern about how you might motivate parents who uh, did not read as children to help to uh, be better readers uh, so that they can in turn pass it on to their children. Well, uh, John, maybe you want to take that one. I saw, you know, these, these wonderful uh, ribbons being given back and forth. Uh, how do you involve the parents? Right now, uh, you know, in the past two years, we now have parents reading in our Books and Beyond program so that uh, we have uh, encouraged our parents to be the models. And uh, that has worked. And we also have, for, for, stu uh, for many of the parents who are having difficulties with reading, we, we have an ESL course. We have a GED course. So we're offering those types of courses for our parents to be involved in. But most importantly is just the uh, pure love of your child, picking up that book and uh, reading to them at night, and you'd be surprised how your reading will improve at the same time. Elaine, any advice for our call? First of all, I think he needs to be congratulated for getting yeah. into reading. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I think our, as volunteers, we can incorporate uh, reading and writing into all aspects of uh, what we do, including like during the summer vacation Bible school, uh, and a lot of older children still attend uh, that kind of activity. And if we can just think in terms of reading and writing being a part of everything uh, that we do. That's the right answer, I think. Reading and writing should be part of everything that we do. And uh, I guess one memory that's in my mind from your film is that little girl said, I'm so proud. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so exactly if great. we can make right. every yeah. child yeah. so proud and every parent so proud, we will succeed. And I'm afraid we're out of time. But thank you so much to Eunice, Steve, John, and Elaine for sharing their insights on how parents, educators, employers, and community leaders can work together to make our students better readers. Thanks also to our many callers and viewers in communities around the country. Let's review what we learned to help students be strong readers. One, read with children and tell stories. 
and give a teenager a good book. Two, encourage children to read and write on their own, 30 minutes a day. Three, encourage children to get library cards and to use them regularly. Four, keep books and reading materials and the sports page in the house. <laughs> Five, encourage children to learn a new word every day. Six, make reading fun with special activities and rewards. And seven, involve families, businesses, libraries, schools, and the entire community in literacy efforts. As we mentioned earlier, our Read Right Now program has begun for the summer. The program is designed for children in preschool through sixth grade and their learning partners. Read Right Now provides a kit with an activity book and other materials to generate excitement in reading, such as a certificate of participation, bookmarks, and that coupon for free pizza at Pizza Hut. A guide for reading tutors is also available. Call 1-800-USA-LEARN to sign up for Read Right Now. You can also obtain a kit from the Education Department's online library. In a few weeks, copies will also be available at your local library. Be sure to tune in to our next Satellite Town meeting on June 18th, when our topic will be School Discipline Strategies, Learning in an Orderly Environment. In Washington, I'm Madeline Kunin. Good night. Town Meeting is made possible by the generous support of our major series sponsor, the Bayer Foundation. Bayer Incorporated is a research-based company committed to supporting education in the arts and sciences because both put the power of creativity and critical thinking at our children's fingertips. And the Procter & Gamble Fund as part of its ongoing commitment to strengthening education in America. And Microsoft Incorporated building the connected learning community. And S.C. Johnson Wax, pleased to be a partner in providing communities throughout the country an opportunity to share ideas and strategies in achieving education reform. For more information on tonight's program or to join our mailing list, call 1-800-USA-LEARN. For publications discussed on tonight's programs, write or call the Information Resource Center, U.S. Department of Education, Room 2421, 600 Independence Avenue Southwest, Washington 20202. Or you may call our helpline at 1-800-USA-LEARN. You may reach us on the World Wide Web using the address on your screen. For more information on the Center for Workforce Preparation, call Ray Nelson at 202-463-5525. To learn more about the National Alliance of Business and its efforts to reform education and build a quality workforce for America, call 1-800-787-2848. Our next Satellite Town meeting will be on Tuesday, June 18, 1996, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The topic will be School Discipline Strategies, Learning in an Orderly Environment. Please be sure to join us.